There are many different techniques to treat nosebleed. Selection depends on the location and severity of the bleeding as well as the equipment available. This video will discuss cautery with silver nitrate, anterior packing with gauze, nasal tampons, various commercial balloon devices. All epistaxis techniques begin the same with positioning and lighting, application of a vasoconstrictor and topical anesthetic, blowing the nose to remove clot, and proper use of the nasal speculum. Position the patient sitting upright, preferably in an ENT chair. Raise the patient so that his nose is approximately at your eye level and position the headrest behind his occiput to keep him from pulling back. Place an absorbent pad over his chest and provide an emesis basin. It's essential to have a good view of the source of bleeding. In this video, the physician uses a head mirror, which reflects light from a source behind the patient directly along the line of sight. Head mirrors provide excellent illumination of the field. Alternatively, many clinicians use a headlamp with an adjustable narrow beam. Check the posterior oropharynx for blood coming down from the nose. Instruct the patient to gently blow his nose to clear away any clots or blood. Then use a nasal speculum to evaluate the anterior nasal passage. Insert the speculum so that the blades open vertically. Brace your index finger on the nose to stabilize the device. Look for evidence of active or recent bleeding on the anterior portion of the nasal septum in the region of Kieselbach's plexus. Also, look for blood flowing anteriorly from the back of the nose. If necessary, use a Fraser-tipped suction catheter under direct visualization to clear the passageway of clots and blood. Next, apply a topical vasoconstrictor. Many clinicians use a spray, such as oxymetazoline. Vasoconstrictors may stop small hemorrhages. They also shrink the nasal mucosa, which enlarges the nasal passages and facilitates insertion of packing. Then, anesthetize the mucosa by applying viscous lidocaine directly into the nose. Alternatively, vasoconstriction and anesthesia can be achieved simultaneously by inserting cotton soaked in 4% cocaine solution or in 4% lidocaine with epinephrine. The cotton is left in place for 10 to 15 minutes. If bleeding is anterior, coming from Kieselbach's plexus, you may attempt to cauterize it directly using silver nitrate. This technique must be done only when you can see the actual bleeding site. Do not blindly cauterize in a stream of blood. Hold the nasal speculum in your non-dominant hand and spread the nares vertically. Hold the silver nitrate stick in your dominant hand and carefully begin to cauterize by rolling the stick over the bleeding mucosa until an eschar forms which usually takes about five seconds. The eschar will have a grayish-black appearance. Avoid excessive cautery, which may cause septal necrosis or perforation. If you're unable to localize the exact source of an anterior hemorrhage, or if silver nitrate cautery has failed, you will need to place an anterior pack. There are multiple methods and devices. Learn to use as many as you can, but make sure you're familiar with the specific material available at your institution. Traditional anterior nasal packing is done with cotton ribbon gauze soaked in petroleum jelly or bismuth iodoform paste. Use bayonet forceps to advance one end of the gauze along the floor of the nasal cavity all the way to the back. Remove the forceps and advance another layer of gauze on top of the first and then continue the insertion in an accordion-like fashion. Be sure to grab a long enough piece of gauze each time so that it can reach the back of the nose. Note that the packing must extend the full depth of the nasal cavity. It's a common mistake to bunch up short segments of gauze in the anterior cavity. When properly placed, about one and a half meters of gauze are required. However, traditional gauze packing has largely been replaced by use of commercial nasal tampons, which are as effective as traditional packing and quicker and easier to use. The standard tampon is 8 centimeters long, but smaller sponges are available for minor anterior epistaxis. To insert the smaller sponge, first lubricate it with topical antibiotic ointment, such as bacitracin, then simply insert it into the anterior portion of the nasal cavity, just deep enough so that it rests inside the nares. Gently rehydrate the sponge with several milliliters of saline solution so that it expands inside the nasal canal. 
The larger sponge, which is indicated for more substantial hemorrhages, is inserted in a similar fashion. It may be trimmed with scissors if it appears too long. First, lubricate the device with a topical antibiotic ointment. Insert it into the nares at a 45 degree angle for one or two centimeters, then bring it perpendicular to the face and advance it fully into the nasal cavity. Once inserted, rehydrate the sponge with three to five milliliters of saline solution. Because this sponge is inserted deeply into the nose, insertion will be uncomfortable unless adequate topical anesthesia was obtained as described earlier. To secure the device, fix the strings to the cheek using tape or transparent dressing. The Rapid Rhino Anterior Pack is an inflatable nasal tampon with a hydrocolloid surface that enhances hemostasis. It's available in a 5.5 cm size for anterior bleeding and a 7.5 cm anterior posterior size. Prior to inserting the Rapid Rhino, submerge it in sterile water for 30 seconds. Do not soak the device in saline. Placement is similar to that of the Miracel tampon. Insert the device at a 45 degree angle for one or two centimeters, then bring it perpendicular to the face and advance it fully into the nose. Once the device is fully inserted, use a 10 milliliter syringe to inflate the balloon with air. Do not use water or saline. The volume of air required will vary by patient. Use the pilot cuff on the device to estimate the pressure exerted by the balloon. Finally, secure the inflation port to the patient's face using tape or transparent dressing. If bleeding can't be localized anteriorly, or if it cannot be controlled with anterior packing, then the bleeding site is likely posterior, and posterior packing is indicated. As with anterior bleeding, there are multiple methods and devices. This video will demonstrate posterior packing using a readily available 16 French Foley catheter. Make sure you are familiar with the specific material available at your institution. Prior to placement of the posterior pack, remember to pretreat the nasal cavity with a vasoconstrictor and a topical anesthetic. Gently insert the Foley catheter into the nose and advance it parallel to the floor of the nasal cavity until the tip of the catheter can be seen in the posterior oropharynx through the mouth. Inflate the balloon with 5 to 7 milliliters of water and then gently pull the catheter out until it is firmly seated in the posterior nasal cavity. Then, slowly inflate the balloon with another 5 to 7 milliliters of water. Finally, wrap a piece of gauze around the catheter at the nares and place a clamp on the catheter to prevent it from sliding back into the throat. Often, you'll also need to place an anterior pack with ribbon gauze. Placing yet another anterior pack in the contralateral nasal cavity may help provide additional tamponade and prevent septal deviation.